celebrated the inaugurator of workshop um, in August this year. Uh, the fourth corporate priority is to uh, continue to manage and develop a range of transport assets and services, including infrastructure, tunnels, ferries, Mersey Rail, and concessions. Um, the, this comes out as a number. It's made up of four activities, and there's two amber and two green. This priority is largely on track, and key developments in Cube 1 include the review of the total legislation and design finalisation being reached for Kirby Bus Station. The fifth corporate priority is to continue to develop an innovative and inclusive contemporary concession travel scheme. It's green, um, made up of four activities, of which three are green and one is amber, largely on track with key developments including a new three-year fixed deals with operators completed, discussions with rail operators ongoing with completion dates set for August 15. Also, the interim report on cost-benefit analysis has been received and being discussed at steering group. So our final corporate priority is around the design, um, design and delivery of an integrated customer-focused program with significantly improved cozy experience. This is great. It's made up of four activities, two amber and two green. The key developments um, include my ticket being made a permanent product to other young people. Um, the enabling activities are summarised from page 153 onwards. These are considered critical um, for the organisation to deliver its services, um, and each with their own overall aims and measures um, are indicated within the, the main body of the, the document. So from page uh, 159 references the financial performance of the mission, and I'll hand you over to Dave. Um, financial implications are basically the first quarter of 2015 16. Uh, it's based upon three months' employees' costs, 12 weeks' creditors, 12 weeks' debt and activity. And there's a summary table just over on page 160, which basically gives you a subjective analysis of how we're performing in terms of employees. Um, overall, Exceptionally good news at this point in time. We're a million pounds below what we expected to have spent so far this year. There's key reasons for that. Mersey ferries had a bump for summer season with the three queens, much, much better than what we expected in terms of budget profile, £200,000 additional income. Uh, Mersey tunnels total income is also on the increase. Patronage is somewhere in between 1 and 2 percent ahead of uh, last year's projection. So, again, that's another. £200,000 additional income being generated there. But there's also about £400,000 worth of employees savings out like there, vacant posts that are currently being carried on the establishment. Overall, as I say, £1 million for the first quarter. There's a further detailed appendices which is starts on page 175, and that really takes that £1 million and allocates or shows which service areas it's coming from. Um, in addition to all that revenue spend, we also do a, a sort of really quick high level snapshot of the capital program. Capital program is slightly different in that the first three months of any financial year is really light on capital spend. Most of the spend in that period all gets posted back to the previous year because it's all to do with the rules and accounting. But again, um, we spoke to officers involved and we expect to see capital spend increase over the next few months. We're also in the process of looking at revising the capital program anyway. Any revisions to the currently approved capital program will be brought back to the committee for approval. That's a really quick, high level view of it, but I'll take any questions on any elements of financial issues. Thanks, Dave. Jeremy? Thank you, Chair. Um, just on um, page 147, uh, KPM4. It says the journey times for Queensway Tunnel are showing up under performance, and this is due to a technical change to data collection and mythology. Um, just can you explain this, please?
Uh, I think it's to do with the movement of where the, the sensor is, isn't it, that picks up where how vehicles are travelling through. So it's just been been moved back, Jeremy. Things haven't slowed down. It's just we're measuring a different distance and haven't fully factored that in yet, but we will do next quarter. I've got Tony and then Steve. Thanks, sir. Spend is really on bus support and transport for the north. Um, when the budget was put together, we weren't sure how much sort of effort we needed to put in, in supporting the CA in the uh, heart of engineering and transport for the north uh, studies. What we found is that we've actually seconded staff into uh, various work streams within transport for the north. We've had to backfill those posts, and that's the increase in consultancy fees. But it, it's not going to add to any of our budget costs because what we're going to do is fund it through the release of the reserve. So you can see it's a self-balancing exercise. There are also other consultants that have been uh, approved to uh, really design up a new program management office as well as a capital program. Um, again, the same principle applies there. There's no additional cost that's going to be charged to the levy or anything like that. We're going to fund all those additional costs through the release of
change the asset management, particularly moving away from the reactive kind of uh, issues to be more proactive at measuring what's going on. Cool. My favourite one is the reduction in uh, carbon emissions using the uh, installations being put in from solar power. And I think it's regarding what's being comfortable about the use of uh, consultants. Continually discuss this with uh, the lead officer with Shane. Uh, and she really does go through all those uh, issues in detail about how to bring any one from outside because it is uh, being something I think I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a point in a minute to say that the amount of work that's going on for our uh, asset management team and the staff to do as much in-house work as is physically possible is tremendous. And I think it's one of the things I've got to say here is to remember this, the contribution of the staff is a major resource and the inflexible and resilience needs a pause. It's always continuous because you, you look to improve and then further improve on that side. I think the particularly um, evident in the crafts and trade side is quite a significant change in that area and there's still uh, substantial changes you know coming forward. We are looking at this to enhance uh, in-house training to reduce again bringing in external trainers over the next five years. If that comes to fruition then uh, that, what that will do is take that budget down probably by about 75%. So you're always looking for, for those changes. And it's, it's to the staff that they know. Maybe Shane could put a figure on that 75%, just so, just so my colleague here who likes to hear <laughs> numbers being mentioned in pounds. <laughs> well, the predicted uh, expenditure for the training over that area of five is about 400,000. So we think we can take 75% of that by training our own staff. Because a lot of the training that goes in, particularly crafts and trade, is very specialised. And quite often it's, it's the best fit. So you never get a perfect training. You might get 70% of the content covering the training, you end up doing that training. Whereas if we had our own staff doing that training, it'd be 100% on what we actually need. So, uh, so what we, it means allocating time for people to have, uh, to become trainers, but the, the, the clawback is that you, you cover more in a session and you do less sessions on them. You, you know you're going to have to deliver that now, Shane, Steve, so written it down. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be as ambitious as that. I was only going to say to Steve it was 250. <laughs> Harry. The workforce is going to be dislocating their shoulders, um, patting themselves on the back because I'm going to be confidential as well. And also on page 156, the sickness. Probably all down to you, Mary. It's um, it's Six and 2.4 days. Uh, person per annum, which is quite remarkable. And on my way of calculating this, and I must confess, employers didn't always use the same system as I use, but that's about 1%, which is quite staggering. And, uh, I really need to be uh, congratulated. Absolutely. Any further questions or comments? Okay. If I can move uh, the recommendation to paragraph 2 of the report, we'll approve that. Moving on, next up is Mersey Travel's multi-operator ticket scheme, and it's the annual fares review and schemes to present these for us. Thank you. Um, first, of this report is really uh, threefold. It's a recommendation for improving the cross-recommendations of the multi-operator ticket scheme, which we've done for January 1, 2016, and Tria, Solo, maximum price for the RTC tickets on those rules at uh, RPI 1% is 
subject to the grounding of near San people with the London tickets and their full count for all their products. Under 3.3, it's recommended that a young person's monthly rail pass products is introduced from the 2nd of January 2016. Essentially, this is being proposed uh, to mitigate the withdrawal of the Midwell Gen Pass product in that portfolio. So, it's anticipated that young people will welcome the additional proposed changes in that report <coughs> on basis of the value for money new savings become available, uh, up to between 4 and 8 cents per pound uh, by buying new monthly tickets. So, that could be equal up to £100 per round uh, South American products in place in Gen Pass. So, uh, with young person previously buying a new Pass on a regular basis, same way on an annual basis. The introduction of the new rail pass products will further demonstrate how we continue to travel and offer money to the young people in the board. Under 3.4, it's proposed that all young persons who have given monthly tickets, including placing on jet pass products, are priced at a standard of 50% of the adult equivalent of fares. Uh, young persons discount for those tickets come to fluctuate between 45 and 52, uh, hence that standardised that approach. And it's also recommended, second to that, In summary, the rules that apply to that would sort of, uh, culminate in the trio of rail passes and prices increasing from the 2nd of January 2016. The prices will increase on the 5th of January. Uh, by the 5th of January, the same way had all the prices price will increase by 10 pounds. Uh, unless the new prices is fully broken down uh, by a rate now percentage per product. Conclusion, um, just as some footnotes and uh, context back to what we've referred, almost 80% of the tickets sold are in the adult market. The overall adult price for 2016 all tickets tied to the motor travel scheme is in line with RPI at 1%. And uh, that will ensure that their prices in the motor travel are still included, particularly those in low incomes and uh, revenue price of all. Uh, again, uh, one of the key uh, drivers for this is the fact that for many young people, the cost of public transport is they rely upon public transport, and obviously standardising their software will make that the, the products more accessible, more open, and encourage public transport as a key aim of the As a footnote and final note of the report, uh, in comparison, Merseyside will therefore be one of the smallest fare increases across the UK for 2016, and proposed changes are on average the lowest applied in percentage terms since 2000. Any questions, Jeremy? Well, Chair, just a quick comment. Um, I just want to raise the officers you know, for ensuring that public transport con continues to be affordable for young people on Merseyside. As officers, you know, like with my ticket, the PR and marketing of you know, the new young person's monthly rail pass will be, will be vital. Indeed. Um, we work very closely with the operators, including those well, to ensure that the, the messaging that they have there is consistent and complementary with each other. There's more detail around that. So I think another good example of how we continue to push forward with young persons' affordability and blaze a trail that I would hope the rest of the railway industry nationally um, can pick up and potentially start. Uh, 
that's not new for us. And so no, I think that's great. The, the other point I was also going to make as well is that um, there's some really good work in here, the fact that it's kind of uh, fairs only going up in line with RPI and that being a small increase and one of the, the smallest we find in the UK and uh, some of the other um, associated uh, aspects as well. One of the things I was just going to mention there was around the young person's school <coughs> time pass. I know it's something I've discussed with Liz. Um, it's only a 35% discount rather than the 50% we'd like to strive for for young people. And I think one way or another we've got to think about how do we make it a 50% um, discount on the value. It might not be a cut in the price, it might be an extension of its eligibility, but I think we've got to think about that because I think we all strongly believe that young people should be paying the traditional half rather than two thirds. But that's one thing I know will take time for us to, to deliver going forward. Yeah. Okay. Mary? Can I just a quick add on? I mean, anything that gets a cheaper deal for the kids, I'm all for, always will be. Just a gentle reminder, if you remember when we were trying to set up my ticket, some of the evidence that we used to get it through was the children who weren't attending school on Thursday and Friday, and they weren't sagging or playing through into the posh. The mum didn't have the bus fare to give them to go to school on Thursday and Friday. So for those kids, it's still happening. They haven't got the money to pay for a pass for a month or three months or a year. That's not the world they live in. So we've still got, even though it's all brilliant stuff, keep fighting for the kids whose mum's only got two pound a day to get them where they're going. Absolutely. Okay. Um, in that case, can I move the recommendations in paragraph two of the report be approved? Yeah. We'll all then take effect first working day of 2016. Uh, next item is the low emissions vehicle update and Stevens, present this for us. Sure. Oh, sorry, Tony. Yeah. First declared an interest in this, I'm a member of the Tassie Quality Partnership. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Tony. We can make sure all the, the relevant paperwork's filled out accordingly. Steve? Thanks, Chair. Um, this report provides a uh, update on the recharge electric charging network, which has been introduced over the last 18 months, um, and a brief update on other low emission vehicle initiatives that have taken place in the city region. Um, the report also, also seeks approval um, to agree to two low emission bus bids um, by the end of this month. So, the recharge update, um, as members will recall, uh, recharge was uh, given approval. Uh, two years ago now, and the first phase has been delivered by the end of June this year. A total of 28 charging posts were installed. Um, I'll pull this those on uh, page 207, and um, And as members will recall, in the April uh, Mr. Travel Committee meeting, it was agreed that the scheme will be free to use until April 2018, or until the allocated funding uh, rolls out on that. And to date, we've got it's around £39,000 left in the budget, uh, and we're using around about £30 a month in electricity charges, so we anticipate that we'll, we'll hit that 2018 target. That's obviously subject to uh, usage uh, not going up drastically. Um, further charging posts will be installed at uh, various sites around the city region. Uh, a list, uh, an indicative list is on page 209. Uh, this is to fill the gaps that uh, in the original network and also to get um, some of the posts that we did to get in, in the first phase to get that in uh, as well. So these will be delivered before the end of this month. Um, general low emission vehicle update, um, charging infrastructure. Members will recall that the recharge network um, is only a standard charger which can charge a car in two to four hours. Uh, we'd like to introduce rapid chargers which can charge vehicles in 30 minutes. Uh, we're one of the few regions in the country yet to install any rapids. There's one uh, recently gone in at Liverpool Airport, but this was done through a, a national company. So um, we're hopeful that Home Level will be announcing funding to help us uh, do that shortly. Um, and we've got, we've got an indicative list of, of locations throughout the city region where we'd like to, uh, to introduce rapid chargers in conjunction with um, private 
private operators so it would be no cost to the to the taxpayer. Uh, <coughs> another scheme that's recently uh, we've recently been successful with is the ultra low emission vehicle readiness scheme. Uh, this was a scheme again run by OLEV where we could introduce electric vehicles into the local authority fleets. We were successful in securing uh, a minimum of 20 vehicles uh, for each of the local authorities in the city region. Uh, measure travel they get four for electric vehicles through that um, and we should be going out to procurement uh, in the next couple of weeks. We also commissioned uh, a report um, into low emission taxis uh, through the Energy Savings Trust. This was uh, with, a, with an eye on um, some more funding that's coming out next year on introducing uh, low emission hackney caps into, uh, into the regions of the UK. Uh, the report has been presented to, the, the feedback from the report has been presented to TAG and the Taxi Quality Partnership, and we're now just um, formalising a, a kind of a way forward on, on the low emission taxis for the city region. As I mentioned uh, there's two um, pots of money available uh, for low emission buses, which we are hopeful of bidding into. Um, this will help support uh, the transport plan for growth, um, key priority of low carbon, and um, which works towards a clean, low emission sustainable transport network, of which buses are an integral part of this. Um, so, Mersey Travel, working with our combined authority partners and local bus operators. Uh, I've agreed to submit a, a city region wide bid to the low emission bus scheme. Uh, the opportunity to be, to be a part of this bid was opened out to all bus operators in the region. Um, however, in the end, only one operator, Aviva, has been able to take this, this, off, this offer and move um, forward on it. It's, a, it's an interesting project, I think, because it uses three different types of technology, um, which is what we're going to be bidding for. This. A uh, proposal to introduce 12 100% electric vehicles on the 26-27 route, um, nine 100% <coughs> gas buses uh, operating out of the Reeve with local depot, um, and introducing 51 uh, diesel hybrids to complement the 50 odd that the Reeve introduced two or three years ago. So, all in all, it's got a total project cost of around £20 million, pounds, of which Five and a half million, roughly, will be uh, provided by OLAV. You know, uh, so it's a quite significant investment in these vehicles, mm -hmm. low emission vehicles, by OLAV, which we're uh, very pleased about. Um, the other low emission bus scheme that's uh, very recently been announced builds on um, a couple of other rounds of funding, and uh, this is a clean bus technology retrofitting scheme, whereby uh, there's a possibility available to retrofit. Uh, Older buses with um, uh, emission savings devices, basically. Um, so far, we've engaged again with all bus operators, and we're, we're currently working on the bid um, with um, two or three operators very keen to, to get some of that technology in, mostly around engine refits at the moment. Uh, but we'll have full details at this square foot near the deadline at the end of this month. Um, in terms of resource implications, um, for both the clean bus and low emission bus um, bids, there are no financial implications for Mersey Travel. Um, any match funding is provided by the operator. Um, for the uh, ULAV readiness scheme, which was the uh, scheme for the um, low emission fleet vehicles, OLEP provides 75% of the leasing costs over two years, so Mersey Travel and the other authority partners have to. Um, but this is more than negated in the, the, the fuel cost savings over those two years. Um, and that's everything. Um, happy to answer any questions.
Manufacture any buses, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Mark. Thanks, Jim. Uh, page 207, 208, uh, 209, sorry. 207, 209. Uh, the charge post locations, um, I'm not seeing those really on there, and I appreciate it. it is my backyard cat, so apologies, I'm seeing any thunder. Are we just unfortunate that we couldn't find any suitable locations? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. We had uh, kind of a long list of those, but in, in terms of it's quite complex to sort of uh, sites, we have to go through the legal process of, of securing the sites. We've, we've, that's why we've kind of generally done it on council property, um, and we're hopeful um, on page 29, appendix B, we're hopeful that those who will have at least two sites in this, but we, at the time of, of writing the report, that hadn't been confirmed, so we were kind of put anything in. But no ZRGs against two sites, definitely. We just need to, to kind of sign the legal agreement on them. Were you able to indicate where they might be, Stephen, or is that um, legally restricted? It's not secret, no. They'll be a uh, round of height and press up on them. Okay. Brilliant. John? Just, just a quick follow-up question for my chair. Just on that, on page 207, the public developer charge post, and I'll tell you this is an ultimate issue of that, that submission, and whether that can be uh, resolved, or is there some intention in the future to actually locate them. Uh, my colleague here to write to me, Councillor Carroll, to point out about the use of actually having a map to locate these things, as well as to see exactly where they are, and see how widespread they are across the uh, city region. Again, Holson was the same, uh, the same reason we had a list, but because of the agreements of what we couldn't meet the deadline in June of this year. Um, we are hopeful that the one close station will pursue the charge of books before the end of the special year, so that will be the start of course. And then there's other sites we've identified. So, uh, in terms of map, that's what we've got a problem.
No further questions or comments? Okay, in that case, uh, can I move the recommendation in paragraph 2 be approved? That's agreed. And final item, Smart City and Update for September 4th. Sure.
seen now is sense of, sense of sales. Ironically, a card that we've seen before has a good indicator of customers holding on to the card. Obviously, every card that we issue costs us money. So that's a really good, good statistic. I think when Gary reports that to the transport minister, they were, they were very, uh, I think, impressed by that level. Quite surprised. I don't see most of them not charging the cards at the minute. Um, we've issued